In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys my best of color grading. So hi guys, welcome back to a new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny, you can find me on our Facebook page under Retard Pro. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys a few techniques how to work with adjustment layers on color grading. So how to get an awesome color grade with just these simple adjustment layers. Yeah, so let's get started with it. Okay, so I've loaded the image already into Photoshop, as you guys can see here in the Layers panel. And before we even get started with the color grading, I do want to say take advantage of your opacities here and also your blending options while you guys are working with these techniques here or with these adjustment layers actually. Sometimes also this is a lot of a creative approach as well. Sometimes it helps to take your uh, different adjustment layers and move them on top or move them down. Also play a little bit with opacity and the blending options to get a new color look and feel. So yeah, do take advantage of these options. Alright, so let's get started with the first one. The first technique that I normally do for color grading here is the selective color adjustment layer. I'm going to select it, as you guys can see already, it opened here in our Properties tab. And also in the right hand side here, you guys also see that under the color space here, we do have a few different color channels. So from red, yellow, green, etc., all of these you can work individually in all of these color channels and a tweak then again your selections here. I normally again work just with neutrals, so I'm pretty happy working just with neutrals that give me a pretty overall neutral effect on the image. And I love now to also play a little bit with the sliders here. So normally I work a little bit with cyan, also love to add a bit of uh, blue magentas into the shadows. And then in blacks I normally push those up a little bit so they flatten the image a little bit. And then I go back into black channels here and switch them back again. Let me also show this to you guys now in the tutorial. So first of all, the cyans, we're going to push this up again. And this most, most probably will not necessarily have the perfect color at the end, but just trying to show you guys how I work with these techniques. Okay, so cyan, also what I do normally is push them all the way to the left, right, so I kind of get a feel of what is happening here. So again, I'm going to take them up a little bit to the left, so say minus 17, somewhere around there. Then as well my magentas also, as you guys can see really how much magentas we have in here. Yeah, and that kind of just gives me a little bit of a bluer magenta push here in the shadow parts as well overall. So plus 10 yellows, I don't want to really want to work too much with those. Obviously to the left I get a little bit more blue and then again to the right more yellows. So maybe let's push them just to minus 4. Okay, now the trick. I also take the blacks up just a little bit. As you guys can see now, we're flattening the image a little bit, but we're getting a really nice pop here on the skin. But obviously we have no, the blacks are also go white, so we want to have them to stay black. So what I want to do is take the blacks just down a little bit again, say to minus 13, and now go into the black channels over here and just push the blacks again. So I'm going to take them up just a bit, and as you guys can see now, it's already too far. They're really black now, so obviously if I take them too high, but I just want to take them a little bit, say, to plus 12, plus 13, somewhere around there. And that's all I do really just in my black channels again. I'm not working with cyan, magenta, or yellows. Okay, so now you can also feel free to work again in your other channels and try to get some different uh, color grades with that. You can also obviously change your blending option then again to screen or something, play a little bit with the opacity here, and have a look what that kind of effect will give you. So again, here's my before and after before and after. Obviously this is still on screen so we can put that back to normal and also back to 100% opacity and again a new color effect before and after, before and after. So this is one technique that I sometimes work and work with this adjustment layer. Let's switch back to adjustments again and now we're going to go into the color balance. So I see a lot of retouches also use color balance because in color balance you have three options. So you can either work in your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. So that also gives you more control over what you're actually doing with your color uh, balances here. So what I want to do now is first of all play just with my shadows maybe. Let's start out with shadows. And yeah, this is again another creative approach. I'm just going to play a little bit, take it a bit to the cyan side. Let's also try to make a little bit of a warmer image here. So I'm going to take it say to plus 15. Also magenta, let's have a look, adding a bit of magentas again as we did earlier into the shadows, not too much. Okay, and yellows as well, let's have a look for that, so adding a bit more warmth. 
obviously the contrast will also go up quite a lot again already if we have a before and after before and after so it does it's a bit strong here with the shadow parts in the yellows let's take it down I'm gonna switch back to the midtones as well also play a little bit with my Cyan here just to get a nicer skin tone there as well and obviously you also have a mask here so whenever you work with these adjustment layers you can always brush it out say on the skin or take it just down a little bit with a low opacity brush so bear in mind you have a few options and take advantage of them yeah okay so let's also continue here I'm gonna take the greens up a little bit magenta is just too much so maybe plus four or five and then as well my yellows as well down as well getting a bit of green in there or more green looks kind of more greenish it's a bit yellowish Okay, minus nine around that, and that's obviously you can ha again a creative approach here. Let's go back to the highlights, and lastly in the highlights, I want to push the reds a little bit. Okay, maybe not too much. Then as well, magentas. Let's have a look. Just getting way too magenta-y now. Okay, I'm going to go to minus ten, and as well minus two in yellow maybe or minus three. So just giving it a nice yellow push. Okay, minus six. All right, so that's again now my before and after, before and after. And really love the yellow in here, but it's a little bit too red for me on the skin. So again, when I do color grades, most of the time I also work with hue and saturation adjustments here. So this stick or this layer, I'll mostly apply that always on top of my last color grade. So if I'm not too happy with the color balance, I'll add this. Say, for instance, if I'm not too happy with the selective color, I will also add a hue and saturation. And now the nice part again about hue and saturation, again, a few options that I can take advantage of. Especially here, I have a few channels again. I can either work in the masters, reds, yellows, green, etc. Work in the individual color channels to take down certain color. And I can also, again, just take the opacity, first of all, out here, and then again on my brush. So three options to dim this and have total control over how much reds I want. So let's also do that a little bit. So reds over here, I just want to desaturate them a little bit. So slightly taking them down to minus, say, 16, 17, somewhere around there. And I'm already happy already with this. I don't need to play with my opacities or with a brush at the moment. But in case it's too strong, you can do that. So let's have a look also here. Again, our before and after, before and after. So way more warm, way more contrast. So again, just a little color change there again. As well, also let's have a look at our saturation here. The sausage gets quite desaturated as well, which kind of suits again a little bit. So overall, as you guys can see, yeah, also the skin tones just desaturated them a little bit. So again, another new technique or layer adjustment layer that I normally work with for color grades. Then as well, let's switch back to adjustments here. Another one that I normally use is also curves. So curves adjustment layer is also used by a lot of retouchers. And you guys most probably are familiar already with curves. Again, you have a few channels here, RGB overall, red, green, and blue as well. So you can also work in these individual channels. On the right hand side you have all your highlights and on the left hand side all your dark areas. So say for instance if I'm going to take the shadow parts here, I can brighten the shadows a little bit and also my dark pixels. Or flatten them a little bit and to the right hand side dark and give them really nice contrast. So again if you want to get a more of a dreamy feel, add another layer with just white or something. And then obviously you can also push these dark areas to make it really bright and flat a bit. Not, I don't want to do that for the moment, just showing you guys here. As well, also from the top, dimming the highlights a little bit or pushing the highlights even a little bit further, especially if you want to get that image pop onto your image. Okay, so then as well now on the right hand side here, we can also tweak the curve a little bit. So I'm going to push this a little bit and take the contrast down a little bit so we add more contrast to this. Don't want to push it too far. This image is already retouched pretty good and has already a pretty good color grading. So again, just a little bit of a pop. Maybe let's also go into the reds over here. Push the reds just a little bit in our high keys or basically in the highlights. So going up a little bit, trying to make a decent curve here. So taking that down a little bit again. Okay, and I also want to go now into the blues a little bit. Just try to get if we can get again a little bit of a magenta feel here. Highlights, well, not too much. Also, let's have a look if we take the shadows up a little bit. Okay, and the highlights down a bit. Okay, so as you guys can see, already again a new color shift there as well. Again, our before 
and after, before and after. This technique, obviously, that's why I also show you guys the few adjustment layers here. Some adjustment layers I find work better on some images. Say, for instance, if I have a bit of a darker image, curves works pretty good. Light images here, again, is color balance. Okay, so you can also play a little bit with the green still. Let's just give this a little try. Okay, we can either add a bit more magentas. Uh, it's just going to get very creative here with the green and yellow. Okay, so we're going to leave it like that. Now again, what I also want to try is just go to screen here, different blending option, way too bright. You can also try to maybe dim this down to 30% for an after. Okay, still way too bright. So screen will obviously brighten everything. It's not the best way. Set that back to overlay here maybe. Okay, also very contrasty again. So again, a complete new color thing there. Obviously, this doesn't look good at all. Maybe taking down the opacity would work a bit. But again, just so like a small bit of a punch in there. Not too happy actually with this adjustment layer. So I would most probably not even use it. Okay, so just pointing you out again, you can also use curves for something like this. And then our last layer that I normally also work with is a color fill layer. So basically, I'm going to go to image and oh sorry layer and we're going to go to new full layer solid color in solid color i'm just going to hit ok for the moment it's going to ask me what type of color do you want i'm going to choose just red over here and hit ok so as you guys can see we have red now and it's affecting the whole image we first of all have to set the blending option all the way down to color and now obviously we get color everywhere and everything is red. So normally I work just with the color fill here with my opacity between 10 to 30%. So it's obviously going to make your whole image, the shadows, everything going to make it red. Now the one nice thing that you can actually do, I'm just going to take the opacity maybe just to 16 for the moment. So it's not too strong here again before and after, before and after. One nice thing that I normally love to do is double click here onto the color. So you get back into the color picker. Now, first of all, into in the first color mode here, I can set how dark or how bright I want that color to be. So, so I'm going to set just somewhere in the middle. And I already can see what's happening here. But the nice thing is now with this middle slider here, I can also tweak this and drop it and directly also get an effect here and can see what I'm doing here on the color. So I can push it up again a little bit green or I can push it up a little bit cyan more. Also blue there. Okay, and definitely it's not working all of them, but some of them kind of look nice, especially also red gives that a bit more contrast as well. So that's one option that I also work with, just adding this, okay, here, and then again, obviously your mask and your opacity, brushing that in and out just a little bit, maybe just adding it for like 7%, just because you wanted to have a little bit more red in there, you can also use that. Okay, so let's also make this a little bit bigger here. Our layers panel again and just have a look quickly again. So from our start here, our selective color again, before and after. Then also a color balance, before and after, before and after. And again, like I said also, here also we have saturation as well in there. So my favorite for the moment is color balance and hue and saturation as well. Also over here, curves, which look way too strong with overlay. Let's take it back to normal, 100% opacity. Okay, before and after, before and after. Bit of a dreamy look there as well. Also love the magentas. And then obviously your reds, which you have on the top here. So again, magenta or reds here, just added them really slightly, say plus 15 again. Okay, let's also try it maybe together with curves. And that's again what I said in the beginning. Try to sometimes now also play again with your adjustment layers here. So you can move the reds maybe down. Okay, we obviously have a lot of reds here. We desaturated from the color balance, so maybe just push them down to the selective color here. Switch that on, and also your new reds over here. So with selective color, again, a complete new color change. Most of them not always work, but that's why it's a creative approach. Try it out. Take your advantage here of your opacity and blending options. Yeah, and these are some of the adjustment layers that I use for creating new color. Yeah, and then obviously you can also still work with plugins, but more of that in a new tutorial someday. Yeah, so that is basically all for today's Photoshop tutorial, guys. Do let me know in the comments down below what you think about these color grading adjustment layers. Um, I would be actually interested to know who of you have some different techniques or what do you guys use for color grading. Do let me know in the comments down below. Happy to hear some feedback here from you guys. Then as well, don't forget to like it, share and subscribe. And yeah, check out retardpro.com. 
And I'll see you guys all next week for a new Photoshop tutorial. Bye-bye.